Good morning, good morning, Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so I will know that you are watching. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, please type a number one in the comments. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Great morning, everyone. You all know what to do. Let's go ahead and begin to log on and share the broadcast as you're tuning in. And go ahead and say, God did it again. It is a great day to be alive. Good morning, good morning, Burita. Good morning, Patricia. Great morning, everybody. All right, let's go ahead and begin to share this out. And after you have shared it, please go ahead and type in the comments, hashtag shared, hashtag shared. Good morning, good morning, great morning, Marion. It's always so good to see you. Well, it's good to see all of you, but yes, always good to see you, Marion. Good morning, Jacqueline, good morning, good morning. All right, let me see. Um, Facebook has not been allowing me to share uh, my broadcast or yeah, my post. I do not have a share button here. So if you all can be so so kind and go ahead and um, share the broadcast for me that would be amazing um, I don't know why I don't have a share button but I don't have a share button here so go ahead and share the broadcast so everyone will know that we are here as I always say uh, it's always a fine time to evangelize and one way to do that is by sharing these broadcasts and you helping to spread the word of God until I figure out uh, why Facebook I, why I don't have a share button <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning. So you all know as you come in and out, don't come in with a heart of worship, begin to type in the comments what you are thankful for on today uh, before we move into our time of worship. So let's go ahead and just take a moment to thank the Father before we do that and also continue to type your prayer requests in the comments so father we honor you father we love you father we bless you you are god and you are good in every way there is to be good and we say thank you somebody go ahead and type in the comments god i thank you we thank you father for being all that we need we thank you god for protecting us through the night from things that we have no idea that you've protected us from we say Thank you. Y'all go ahead and type that in the comments. We thank you, Father, for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time with you. We thank you for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time in your word. We thank you, God, for a sound mind. Go ahead and type that in the comments. I thank you for a sound mind, and we love you on today. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for coming in. And thank you all for sharing the broadcast. I appreciate you all helping me to get the word out and spread the word on what it is that we are doing here. If you have not already, make sure that you've grabbed your anointing oil, your blessed oil, and that you've anointed your hands. And what do we say? My hands are blessed. Go ahead and type that in the comments. Good morning. My hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything that I touch multiplies. Everything I touch turns to gold. Amen. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover in Jesus name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to go ahead and um, play our song of worship on today. Let me go ahead and um, get this going here give me just a moment you all continue to share continue to um you're welcome anna all right so here we go good morning everybody so remember you can use this time to just sit and listen um use this time to journal um use this time to just sit and soak and receive whatever it is the lord has for you on this morning um, let me see. Hold on. Someone, I saw someone say that they can't hear me. Can you all hear me okay? Can I, can someone say yes if you can hear me? All right, let's go ahead and.
Go ahead and type in your prayer request in the comments. Mercies are new every morning. reaches to the sky. Amen. We love you. We bless you. We worship you on today, Lord. Hallelujah. Begin to type in the comments what you're thankful for this morning. Just the sky.
Just lay it all down. Very best efforts, laying them down. And in quietness and trust is my strength. Oh, 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 So we bless your name on this morning, Father. We lift up every single prayer request to you on today. We know that you know what every person on this broadcast needs, Father. <coughs> Excuse me. And we thank you. We honor you. We love you. And we thank you that your mercies are new every morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So good morning to those of you that are just tuning in. We just finished up with our moment of worship just to prepare our hearts and minds before we um, listen to the word on this morning. If you all have not shared the broadcast, um, please go ahead and share that for me. Um, and we are going to go ahead and get started. So go ahead and grab your Bibles, grab your journals, grab your water, grab your vitamins, whatever it is that you need. Um, and we are going to listen to the word of God. And then I have some things written down here to share with you all. Um, and I saw that someone said the music was too loud and my voice was too low. So I'll make sure that um, the beginning of the broadcast, you all can hear me over the music. All right. So I did see that. All right. Let me pull this up on my phone. Um, God is so good. Somebody type that in the comments. God is good. He is so good. Uh, sometimes it's time to move on to the next thing after, um, after that. But... All right, so today is the 25th, and here we go. And if the volume is okay on this, please let me know. Type a number two in the comments. November 25th. We begin today, as usual, in the Old Testament. We are done with the book of Ezekiel, and today we begin our reading in the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 1, and we'll go through chapter 2, verse 23. Is the volume a okay? overview of uh, the book of Daniel before we begin. When Nebuchadnezzar began his conquest of Judah in 605 B.C., he deported a number of Jews to Babylon, including Daniel and his friends, who were probably teenagers at the time. Well, God blessed Daniel and gave him important places of service under four different rulers who represented three different kingdoms. Someone let me know if the when volume is okay. Daniel, you meet a man of God who was faithful to the Lord and glorified him in the enemy's land. The emphasis in Daniel is on the sovereign will of God in the affairs of nations. In a series of dreams and visions, God showed Daniel the course of Gentile history until the establishing of the promised kingdom on earth. With Babylon's taking of Jerusalem, the times of the Gentiles began and will continue until Christ returns to set up his glorious kingdom. God is in control of history and will work out his perfect plan. God also wants to have control in your life, just as he did in Daniel's life. And he will, if, like Daniel, you determine in your heart to serve him faithfully. Daniel was a man of personal integrity who had nothing to fear because he feared the Lord and served him. Now, chapter one, as we begin here, we'll see the world always wants the best. But these young men determined to give their best to the Lord. 
It is possible to serve the Lord even in Babylon. Think of Joseph in Egypt and Esther in Persia. Hey, don't complain about the place where God puts you. Ask him to use you while you're there. Ooh, amen. The world wants to change you and make you a conformer, but God can help you become a transformer. Daniel and his friends had a new home, strange new names, new teachings, and were even offered a new diet. But they kept the same heart's dedication to the Lord. God can give us favor in difficult places. Daniel was courteous to his guards and did not create problems for them. He was following the counsel of Jeremiah and the example of Joseph. When everything in your life is upset and you find yourself in new circumstances that you cannot control, well, let the Lord take over Amen. and work out the plan he has in mind. If your heart is right with him, his hand will be on you and will work through you and for you. And with that, let's begin our reading today in the Old Testament. Amen, Tish. November 25th, Daniel chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 23. During the third year of King Jehoiakim's reign in Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it with his armies. The Lord gave him victory over King Jehoiakim of Judah. When Nebuchadnezzar returned to Babylon, he took with him some of the sacred objects from the temple of God and placed them in the treasure house of his God in the land of Babylonia. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, who was in charge of the palace officials, to bring to the palace some of the young men of Judah's royal family and other noble families who had been brought to Babylon as captives. Select only strong, healthy, and good-looking young men, he said. Make sure they are well-versed in every branch of learning, are gifted with knowledge and good sense, and have the poise needed to serve in the royal palace. Teach these young men the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily ration of the best food and wine from his own kitchens, they were to be trained for a three-year period, and then some of them would be made his advisors in the royal court. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were four of the young men chosen, all from the tribe of Judah. The chief official renamed them with these Babylonian names. Daniel was called Belteshazzar. Hananiah was called Shadrach. Mishael was called Meshach. Azariah was called Abednego. But Daniel made up his mind not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. He asked the chief official for permission to eat other things instead. Now, God had given the chief official great respect for Daniel, but he was alarmed by Daniel's suggestion. My lord, the king has ordered that you eat this food and wine, he said. If you become pale and thin compared to the other youths your age, I'm afraid the king will have me beheaded for neglecting my duties. Daniel talked it over with the attendant who had been appointed by the chief official to look after Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Test us for ten days on a diet of vegetables and water, Daniel said. At the end of ten days... See how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's rich food. Then you can decide whether or not to let us continue eating our diet. So the attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. So after that... The attendant fed them only vegetables instead of the rich foods and wines. God gave these four young men an unusual aptitude for learning the literature and science of the time. And God gave Daniel special ability in understanding the meanings of visions and dreams. When the three-year training period ordered by the king was completed, the chief official brought all the young men to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with each of them, 
and none of them impressed him as much as Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they were appointed to his regular staff of advisors. In all matters requiring wisdom and balanced judgment, the king found the advice of these young men to be ten times better than that of all the magicians and enchanters in his entire kingdom. Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus's reign. One night, during the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that disturbed him so much that he couldn't sleep. <coughs> he called in his magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers, and he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed. As they stood before the king, he said, I have had a dream that troubles me. Tell me what I dreamed of, for I must know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic, Long live the king. Tell us the dream, and we will tell you what it means. But the king said to the astrologers, I am serious about this. If you don't tell me what my dream was and what it means, you will be torn limb from limb, and your houses will be demolished into heaps of rubble. But if you tell me what I dreamed and what the dream means, I will give you many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me the dream and what it means. They said again, Please, your majesty, tell us the dream, and we will tell you what it means. The king replied, I can see through your trick. You are trying to stall for time, because you know I am serious about what I said. If you don't tell me the dream, you will be condemned. You have conspired to tell me lies in hopes that something will change. But tell me the dream, and then I will know that you can tell me what it means. The astrologers replied to the king, There isn't a man alive who can tell your majesty his dream, and no king, however great and powerful, has ever asked such a thing of any magician, enchanter, or astrologer. This is an impossible thing the king requires. No one except the gods can tell you your dream, and they do not live among people. The king was furious when he heard this, and he sent out orders to execute all the wise men of Babylon. And because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. When Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill them, Daniel handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. Come on, Daniel. He asked Arioch, why has the king issued such a harsh decree? So Arioch told him all that had happened. Daniel went at once to see the king and requested more time so he could tell the king what the dream meant. Then Daniel went home and told his friends Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah what had happened. He urged them to ask the God of heaven to show them his mercy by telling them the secret so they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. That night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven, saying, Praise the name of God forever and ever, for he alone has all wisdom and power. He determines the course of world events. He removes kings and sets others on the throne. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he himself is surrounded by light. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength. You have told me what we asked of you and revealed to us what the king demanded. Somebody type and praise the Lord. All right, we're moving into the New November Testament. 25th. If you haven't shared yet, please share. Our scripture reading in the New Testament today will be from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. We'll go through chapter 4, verse 6. We'll read about life in the church. Imagine having to remind Christians to show one another love and courtesy. But as James chapter 4 shows us, not every local assembly is a place of peace. Not every local church is a place of safety and refuge. We'll read about being in the world. Anybody can suffer for doing wrong. But Christians must learn to suffer for doing what's right. Of course, Jesus is the example for us to follow. 
we witness not by making noise and fighting back, but by showing meekness and fear. A gentle Amen. witness can make a big difference in a violent world. Do not be controlled by the past. This is one of the uh, lessons here in 1 Peter chapter 4. People who have been born again through faith in Christ should not allow the old life to control them. The past has been buried, and they are new creatures in Christ. Furthermore, life is too short to waste it on godless living, especially when you realize that one day we will all stand before God. And let's begin now our reading today in the New Testament. November 25th. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, through chapter 4, verse 6. Finally, all of you should be of one mind, full of sympathy toward each other, loving one another with tender hearts and humble minds. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate when people say unkind things about you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God wants you to do and he will bless you for it. But the scriptures say, if you want a happy life and good days, keep your tongue from speaking evil mm -hmm. and keep your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Work hard at living in peace with others. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. Now, who will want to harm you if you're eager to do good? But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't be afraid and don't worry. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if you are asked about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. But you must do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then, if people speak evil against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Mm -hmm. Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good, if that is what God wants, than to suffer for doing wrong. Amen. Christ also suffered when he died for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners that he might bring us safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. So he went and preached to the spirits in prison, those who disobeyed God long ago, when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat. Waited patiently. Only eight people were saved from drowning in that terrible flood. And this is a picture of baptism, which now saves you by the power of Jesus Christ's resurrection. Baptism is not a removal of dirt from your body. It is an appeal to God from a clean conscience. Now Christ has gone to heaven. He is seated in the place of honor next to God. And all the angels and authorities and powers are bowing before him. Mm, somebody so say then, amen. since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. Mm, mm, for if mm. you are willing to suffer for Christ... You have decided to stop sinning, and you won't spend the rest of your life chasing after evil desires, but you will be anxious to do the will of God. You have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy, their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties, and their terrible worship of idols. Of course, your former friends are very surprised when you no longer join them in the wicked things they do, and they say evil things about you. But just remember that they will have to face God, who will judge everyone, both the living and the dead. Mm -hmm. That is why the good news was preached even to those who have died, so that although their bodies were punished with death, they could still live in the spirit as God does. This is so good today. <laughs> Psalm 119. Verses 65 Ooh, through so 80. Good. The word of God can encourage you in times of affliction, as we shall see as we read this psalm today. What life does to you depends upon what life finds in you. If the word is in your mind and heart, affliction can bring out the best in you. 
If not, it may bring out the worst in you. The School of Suffering never graduates any students. School so of ask Suffering. God to teach you the lessons He wants you to learn. Now, God made you and knows best how you should manage your life. The Bible is his how-to-do-it manual for making life work successfully. It tells you how to use your body and mind, how to handle your time and money, and how to make right decisions. Mm -hmm. Obeying it can keep you from getting into trouble and hurting yourself and others. Do not wait until all else fails before you read the instructions. It may be too late, and the price might be too high. Anybody else Psalm know about the School of Suffering? My God. You have done many good things for me, Lord, just as you promised. I believe in your commands. Now teach me good judgment and knowledge. I used to wander off until you disciplined me. But now I closely follow your word. You are good and do only good. Teach me your principles. Arrogant people have made up lies about me. But in truth, I obey your commandments with all my heart. Their hearts are dull and stupid. But I delight in your law. Good morning. The suffering you sent was good for me. For it taught me to pay attention to your principles. Come on. Your law is more valuable to me than millions in gold and silver. You made me. You created me. Now give me the sense to follow your commands. May all who fear you find in me a cause for joy. For I put my hope in your word. I know, O oh Lord, that your decisions are fair. You disciplined me because I needed it. <laughs> Now, let your unfailing love comfort me, just as you promised me your servant. Surround me with your tender mercies, so I may live, for your law is my delight. Bring disgrace upon the arrogant people who lied about me. Meanwhile, I will concentrate on your commandments. Let me be reconciled with all who fear you and know your decrees. May I be blameless in keeping your principles. Then I will never have to be ashamed. Proverbs 28, verse 14. Blessed are those who have a tender conscience, but the stubborn are headed for serious trouble. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for your word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Oh, y'all, today was so good. So good. So good. So good. So as I'm listening um, I, I, and things jump out at me, I always write down different prayer points and things that I have to come back to after the broadcast so that's what all that writing in my bible is so i do that after the broadcast and i pray that you all do the same that you don't just listen and run um so i have a, just a few things that um i want to share and then i will let you all go um someone type in first peter 3 11 for me hold on now i have to find it i got all this writing in my bible first peter 3 11 hold on first peter 3 11 it says turn away from evil and do good search for peace and work to maintain it search for peace and work to maintain it but um the 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 translation that i read yesterday said to pursue peace someone typed in hashtag pursue and the word pursue means to follow in order to catch something to continue to proceed along to continue um so there's a lot of different definitions um for the word pursue which um what stood out to me was says to follow in order to catch something so we're supposed to pursue peace again it says search for peace and work to maintain it work to maintain it somebody say work somebody say work and what i want to say this morning anything that costs type this in the comments anything that costs me my peace is too expensive anything that costs me my peace 
is too expensive. Anything that costs me my peace is too expensive. So my question to you today is, is the enemy trying to rob you of your peace? Yes, we have to work. Yes, search for it and work to maintain it. So when we search for it and we find it, we have to work to maintain it. What does that tell us? That our peace can be lost, right? It can be stolen. Anything that robs that cause that cost me my peace is too expensive. And so I need you to say that I will not allow the enemy to get to me today because the enemy is always after our peace. Hashtag ask me how I know. And it's a plan, it's his plan. You know, he is always after our peace. And so we have to work hard to we have to work hard to maintain it, is what I'm trying to say. All right. And so how do we pursue peace? I have a few things here, but um, what do I want to share? Because some of this is for me, some of this for you, this for you. How to pursue peace. The first is, um, and these are just some things for me, and of course I'm always sharing with you, how to pursue peace. Um, number one, practice restraint, especially with our tongue. Practice restraints, especially with our tongue. And remember, I shared with you all that this is still something um, that I'm working on. So this is just a few ways that I have found in my own life how to pursue peace. Uh, Minds were stolen, not today, devil. That's right. Come on. That's right. You know, that's right. And so let me just say this because I had to write this down. All right, let me get back. Um, practice restraint, especially with our tongue. James 1 9 is the scripture reference, and I need to calm down. I was listening to this today and I got so excited, and I'm just like, <laughs> like, calm down. Practice restraint, especially with our tongue. James 1 19 is the scripture reference for that. Number two, how do we pursue peace? Prepare for a long journey, right? Anytime you're pursuing something, anytime you're searching for something, it's a journey, right? So we need to prepare for a long journey. Um, a scripture reference for that is 1 Peter 3.11. 1 Peter 3.11. And my little note here says, we may be called to be a peacemaker in, relationship with de in relationships with deep wounds. We must be ready for the long haul. So there's a lot that's involved with this. And so um, if there's anyone like me, I have been called to be the peacemaker amongst, you know, my family and a lot of things that went on. And so there are some very deep, 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 deep wounds in these relationships. So we need to be prepared and we need to be ready for the long haul. All right. Um, and then the last one I have written down here is to trust God, the injustice that you've suffered. Trust God with the in. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry, Letitia. I probably am talking fast. Let me slow down. I am so sorry, y'all. When I'm excited, I talk really fast. So let me go back. Number one was practice restraint, especially with your tongue. Let me just slow down. James 119. All right. And then number two was prepare for a long journey. Prepare for a long journey because I know you all are writing First Peter 3.11. Letitia was like, slow down. <laughs> All right. Slow down, ma'am. Slow down. All right. So that was First Peter 3.11. Prepare for a long journey. Be ready for the long haul. And the third that I have here was to trust God, the injustice that you've suffered. And a scripture reference for that is 1 Peter 2.19. 1 Peter 2.19. All right. And we will experience hurt. We will experience pain. And we even read this. I believe it was just yesterday. Jesus suffered too. Same thing today. So yesterday and today, you know, so uh, one of the biggest lies I believe that many of us believed, or at least I know I did for a very long time is that when you become a Christian, when you become a believer, when you become a follower of Jesus Christ, that your, your, your whole world, your life will be easy, right? And I believe that when I said yes that day, um, I was about 16, 15 or 16 years old when I thought my whole entire life was going to get better and that everything was going to change and it was going to be amazing and it was going to be easy. I said, ooh, the lies we've been told and the lies we believe because it's been the actual opposite of that, right? And so um, who are we to think that we won't ever have to suffer, right? Who? Listen, I know all about the school of suffering. Um, 
And so I need you all to say, I will be a peacemaker and I will allow God to handle it. I will allow God to handle it. And so um, I just want to say today that we get to open up our mouths like and speak to the mountains, right? So I want you all to say today, the raging waters in my life, peace be still. You're welcome, Jacqueline. Peace be still. Y'all type this in the comments. Peace be still. I say to my mind, peace be still. And I've had to say this often, right? I say to my emotions, y'all type this in the comments, peace be still. I say to my body, peace be still. I say to my family, peace be still. Whatever that thing is, whatever that situation is that is trying to rob you of your peace today, I need you all to say yes, Angela. Peace be still, peace be still, and we get to do that because I've had to speak a lot to my mind, I had to speak a lot to my emotions, I had to speak a lot to my body and just say peace be still because uh, let me tell you all, and I keep saying in September and October were truly two months that I really wanted to forget. But what I can say is I bless God because November truly has been a November to remember. And I'm excited because what's today? It's only the, today is what? Only the 25th. So I still have, we still have five more days in November, right? Five more days in November. God said, I know he said that this was going to be a November to remember. And uh, yeah, five more days. <laughs> and I'm just excited. All right, so what else did I have to share? Um, I have an email that I want to send to you all later that has um, some peace declarations from scripture. And I couldn't read them all this morning on the broadcast, so I want to send out the email later on. So if you are not on the email list, make sure after the broadcast you click on the link and you get on the email list, and I will send it later on this evening. And the reason why I wait until the evening is because people come back and they watch the broadcast all throughout the day. And I want to make sure I give everyone a chance to input their email addresses so I don't have to resend it again. So I do have a few decorations that I want to read today and then leave you all with our prayer points um, for the day. And then I think that was all I had. Everything else was here for me. So yes, if the enemy is trying to rob you of your peace, I need you all to say, not today, right? So I declare that the Lord is my peace in the midst of my storm. So if you are in the middle of a storm right now, I need you to open your mouth and declare that the Lord is your peace in the midst of the storm. I declare that I am in perfect peace. I will not be troubled. Hashtag waking early for his glory. And I declare that I have the peace of God like a river. I declare that I have the peace of God like a river. Hashtag waking early for his glory. And so um, in the document that I have, I have... Um, the scripture references and then I have um, the declarations written out I think there might be about 10 or 11 of them so um, I want to share them all with you so you can print them off and have them everywhere that's right Angela it's so good to see you, Angela Hubbard um, so the prayer points for today the first one is repent somebody type in repent repent for the times that you chose conflict or strife instead of peace anybody ever been there repent for the times you chose conflict or strife instead of peace the next prayer point is to ask god to help you to pursue peace and to stay in it for the long haul ask god to help you to pursue peace and stay in it for the long haul it, listen that's that scripture we can pray that right um, the next prayer point, ask God to help you to trust all injustice to him. Ask God to help, because listen, it's not an easy thing. Ask God to help you to trust all injustice to him. Why? Because he is our vindicator. He is our vindicator. Um, and the last prayer point for today after the broadcast, um, hopefully you all will grab your journals and grab your Bibles and um, continue on after the broadcast. The last prayer prayer point is ask him to show you what listen is this in this one right here is not easy ask him to show you what relationships you need to go back and make peace with yeah ask him to show you what relationships you need to go back to and that's kind of where I am right now actually where I've been for uh for quite some time now and it's not an easy thing 
But if you ask him to show you what relationships, he will show you. And if you ask him to thank you, Anna, um, and if you ask him to help you, he will. All right. And in Matthew 5, 9, is it 5, 9 or 5, 19? Um, Jesus promises that the peacemakers will be blessed. So I, I'll look this up. I believe it's Matthew 5, 9. Hold on. Is it 5, 9? Because I, I want to make sure you all have this. Hold on. Hold the line. Hold the line. I want to give y'all the right verse. Is it 5, 9 or 5, 19? Hold the line. Okay, yeah, so it's 5-9. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. So I want to leave you all with, with Matthew 5-9. And I had to meditate on that as I was going back through these relationships um, and having to make peace, even when I felt like it ain't my fault. <laughs> I'm so sorry. There was a song, and somebody on me on here. Man. <laughs> Listen, y'all. Somebody say, "Keep it holy, Keisha." <laughs> it's it's okay to have fun, right? But the way I said it, this was somebody, some artist that sings, "Oh, it ain't my fault," you know, and just the way that came out, that song came to mind. It's a really old song from a long time ago. I don't even remember who the artist is. I'm sorry, y'all forgive me, cause I know somebody on here is gonna get mad. But then for those of you that know, it's okay to laugh. It's okay to laugh, right? Somebody please laugh with me, because now I'm feeling like, oh. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. It's okay to laugh, y'all. I'm sorry about that. This something just came to mind. <laughs> Let me continue on. So, okay, good. At least one other person is laughing with me. The way that came out. <laughs> Cause now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I am so embarrassed. <laughs> oh gosh. So tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I will not be on live tomorrow. <laughs> I know, Letitia. I'm so embarrassed. Okay, let me stop because now I'm sweating. See, now I'm over here embarrassed and sweating <laughs> all right so it's okay to laugh somebody's gonna message me and be upset but that's okay listen it's okay to laugh and have fun um so in all seriousness tomorrow is thursday happy thanksgiving i will not be live and i will not be live on friday um i know i know as soon as it came out i paused like did i just do that and i surely did um, so I will not be live on Thursday. I will not be live on Friday. Um, if I am live on Friday, if, if our connection is good, um, it'll be just a pop-up. Hey, I'm here. But for right now, um, I will not be. So that made for a really short week this week. Um, Jay, did you just, yeah. Um, listen, we're all human, right? It's okay to have fun. It's, it's not a big deal. But I am sweating now. Um, so yeah, I will not see you all until Monday. So it's been a short week this week. Um, I had so much going on. I didn't even realize. I was like, oh, Thanksgiving. Oh, just so much going on. So, um, yes. All right, you all. It's okay. Laughing is good. Yes, laughing is good. Yes. Yeah, I start sweating when I get embarrassed. I was like, okay. So anyway, go ahead and share your takeaways in the comments. Um, something that stood out to you or something that you will do differently because of what you heard today. Um, and don't forget to share your email address in the link if you have not shared it yet. And I will send the document out later on. It's just one page. Um, oh, Lady Ruby, did you make a cake? I know. I, you've been trying to cook for me forever and I've never made it out there, but I surely will one day. All right, so you all have an awesome day. Wow, this has been a super short week. Um, so I'll see you all on Monday. And like I said, if I do pop up on Thursday, on, on Friday. Um, 
I will, and if not, then I'll see you all on Monday because I won't know how our connection is going to be until tomorrow or actually later this evening. All right. Um, and I thought, I, and I will um, get all, I, I got all of the orders for your oil, your oils and your vitamins and everything. I will make sure that all of that goes out today. So don't worry. It's all going to go out today. Um, it'll go out today. I love you too, Letitia. Love you too. <laughs> All right, so I think that's it now. I feel like I'm just hanging around because I just realized uh, that I won't be live tomorrow. <laughs> all right, so I'm just sitting here staring at you all. So I think that's it. You all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I feel like I'm going to miss you guys. <laughs> uh, Rosa says, thankful and grateful for all you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And you are blessed too, Tiffany. Yes, happy Thanksgiving to you all as well. And I'm going to go back and read. I wrote a few things down um, that I need to go back to um, when we were listening this morning. All right, so I think that's it, you all. That's it. I know. I think that's it. <laughs> the Lord is my peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Who do I need to make peace with? Listen, be ready. Be ready for that, Keisha. You know, be ready. Be ready for it. Because listen, when I asked God, I wasn't ready for it. So be ready because he'll tell you. He will tell you. And it's not the easiest thing to do, but he is with you. He will be with you along the way. I had to make plenty of phone calls um, that I did not want to make. Um... But there is blessing. Let me just say this. There's definitely a blessing in your obedience. There is blessing in your obedience. Hashtag ask me how I know. So be ready to make the calls. All right. So I'm going to go. I feel like I'm just hanging around because I won't see you all until Monday. Um, what time is it? Uh, six minutes before Anthony's alarm clock goes off. So I have just a few minutes. All right, so enjoy. Oh, you too, Laverne. All right, you all. Have a great one. Bye, y'all. Maybe while you can't see for your... Yes, there is. And remember, delayed obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. So make the call, send the text, send the email, go visit, whatever it is he says to do. Just do it immediately. Just get it done. Don't delay. All right, bye, y'all.